Hello, and welcome to another Fireside Chat. Our guest today is New York State Senator Jeremy Cooney. Our host, of course, Neil McKeeja, Executive Director of Impact. Without further ado, Neil McKeeja. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's great to see you all uh, virtually. Uh, there's a lot happening uh, in politics and in the country right now. And a lot has happened in the last few months. Uh, we helped elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, we helped just last week uh, elect uh, two senators from the state of Georgia, John Ossoff and, and Reverend Warnock. Uh, we've been making history. And I think it's important that we pause and really uh, remember uh, why we got started as an impact and kind of what our goal was, which was to increase uh, our representation as a community and add diversity to, to government, not just at the federal level and at the top, but also uh, at the state level and down ballot. So uh, one of the great wins we had as an organization uh, for impact was that a number of our state, uh, state office down ballot uh, endorse, endorsees uh, were elected in November. And that includes a number of state senators uh, in New York, in Pennsylvania, Michigan. Uh, and one of those who we're really proud of and just uh, excited to see take office is State Senator Jeremy Cooney uh, in Rochester. Uh, we're, I'm excited to have a conversation with him. And for those of you who don't know his background, uh, he has an extraordinary story. Uh, he was born in an Indian orphanage uh, adopted by a courageous single mom in Rochester in a neighborhood of South Wedge. Uh, he got his start in politics and public service uh, in the office of Congresswoman uh, Louise Slaughter. And uh, since then, uh, he served in the Rochester city government and in a number of community positions. And we're really excited that this is a uh, this was a really big win in November uh, where he flipped a seat uh, and, and is making history and really supporting some uh, policies that I think uh, many of you will, would love to hear about. So uh, with that, let me just welcome Jeremy and uh, congratulations. It's so great to see you uh, in your in your office, I think, right now. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Neil. It's great to see you too. I, I know it's a pretty plain background uh, because we just started two weeks ago. So we're, we don't have anything up on the wall, but we're here and we're here thanks to Impact. So glad to be here. It's, you know, we're so proud of you. You ran a really exciting campaign. Um, I know one of the things that we worked on together that you talked about was the, an event with Andrew Yang, um, who is a proponent of uh, universal basic income. And, and you came out uh, in favor of that, uh, in terms of policy, and I want to talk about policy, but you know, given this is impact, and our goal is is representation and and getting Indian Americans and and members of our community and South Asians generally involved in government, get, tell us about uh, your story and your background and and your connection with the with uh, the community, and you know, you, you have such a you know extraordinary story. I, I think it's important for folks to hear that. Thank you, and, and I'm glad to share my story. And, and it may hopefully be a story that others share who, who are watching today's broadcast. Um, so I, I came to this country um, as an adoptee from an orphanage in Calcutta, India. Um, I came at a very, very young age. Um, my mother, Anne, uh, decided that she wanted to start a family, but she, as she, as she would tell you, she didn't want to wait around for uh, a husband to come into the picture. So she, she, uh, she got started with me, and uh, so she took the the brave and courageous decision to adopt the to adopt me, and I came right to Rochester, uh, New York, upstate New York, and. Um, I, she raised me by herself. She never found that husband, but uh, the two of us uh, were peas in a pod and um, she took great care of me and raised me in the city of Rochester. And uh, I had the opportunity to actually go back to India with her uh, several years later and kind of have that cultural immersion, um, that kind of whole set of water in your face where you realize this is your homeland. And it was really, an incredible experience. We were there for just a little over a month uh, and I had a chance to go back to uh, the orphanage I'm from. Uh, unfortunately, 
when I was in college, um, the orphanage shut down. It was um, International Mission of Hope, or IMH, um, in Calcutta. And so uh, they just ran out of funds, unfortunately. Uh, but it was a really unique orphanage in the sense that in the late 70s and early 80s, I was born in 1981, I'm 39 years old. Um, in that time period, there weren't a lot of services for women uh, who were not able to take care of their, their baby, they were pregnant, but didn't have a safe place to deliver their child. And so my uh, birth mother um, knew that she could not take care of me. And I don't know anything about her circumstances or her background, um, but anon anonymously was able to come to um, International Mission of Hope, um, deliver her her child, me, safely, and um, and then you know go on with her life, um, but knowing that um, I would be raised in a safe uh, environment and uh, and hopefully adopted one day. And uh, thanks to Ann Cooney, um, that dream was made possible. So I came to the United States as a young child. I became um, a citizen at a young age uh, as well, um, and. Raised in Rochester, I mean, obviously, I'm. I always joke that I'm the tannest Irishman you you ever met. <laughs> um, but you know, I've got Jeremy Akbar Cooney is my is my le full legal name, and uh, raised by uh, Anne, and um, you know, found opportunities to just reconnect with my Indian heritage um, throughout throughout my life. Um, but I really, I really wanted to just take a moment and just. Share the experience I had, um, and Neil, you and I have spoken about this before. But it, it was so impactful to me, and that was a few years ago. Um, Impact hosted a, a gathering of Indian Americans and South Asians from across the United States uh, in Washington D.C. It was uh, built as kind of a workshop and a training, but also uh, an opportunity for kind of professional development and, and encouragement for more. Indians to run for uh, elected office, uh, bipartisan, which I thought was great, um, and really just having representation of, of people who look like us uh, in, in levels of government. And I went to that conference. I didn't know anyone. I went by myself. Um, I knew one of the organizers. Um, and uh, it was so moving for me to walk into a large room, beautiful room in inside the beltway and see a bunch of people who look like me. Now they may have had more uh, Indian sounding names <laughs> than Jeremy Cooney, uh, but but they, they it was just so impactful to see so many Indians who were passionate about public policy and about making a difference in their community. Some who had thick accents, some who had come to this country um, as a young child, some who were raised by first generation parents, um, just the, but just that cultural heritage shared story was really impactful. And I think back to that moment now, because here we are just hours uh, or days and hours before um, the inauguration of, of uh, President-elect Joe Biden and, and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. And, and Kamala Harris, then Senator Harris was a speaker at that um, event and talked about her her cultural heritage and connection through her mother uh, in India, and so I think about where we've come as a country and and even my own growth and development um, since that meeting. And I'm just very grateful for Impact for giving me that opportunity. Yeah, no, I mean I wasn't in charge then, but I was there. Um, the credit. <laughs> and I had the same feeling, and you know I know. Uh, Deepak and and Raj and and Minnie and and the team and Gautam are all huge fans and and really excited um, that you've won and have talked about you uh, kind of being involved since then or being part of the community and I, I think it really speaks to the broader notion of like even within our community there's so many diverse experiences but over our overall our goal is is to see a government and, and that's inclusive. Um, and to give people that chance to see themselves in positions of leadership. So what, I mean, when did you first see that? When did you first think that, you know, this is something that I could do? Well, I was one of those overachieving Indian children, right? <laughs> so yeah, um, you, you, that, that part is, yeah. 
<laughs> I didn't have the Indian parents tell me that, although I had I had my my mom, and uh, I talk about her in the past tense because I should note that my that my mom did pass away um, a few years ago, which is one of the reasons why I got into um, in my interest in running for office. But um, I say overachieving because I was involved in everything, right? And and I, I was active in Boy Scouts. I was active in my student governments. I was. I'm active in a number of kind of youth leadership opportunities growing up. And um, I would say the moment that kind of clicked over for me um, was when I was in college and then law school, I had the opportunity of being um, student body president at, at Hobart and William Smith Colleges where I attended. I was the um, president of the Hobart student government and then also um, president of my law school class uh, at Albany Law School. And in both of those experiences, I had the opportunity to sit at a table with individuals who were making decisions that impacted me and impacted my classmates. And I felt a, a real privilege of, of being able to you know, speak up on behalf of, of others who were not able to be in the room. And I really enjoyed that experience. And I felt that responsibility very earnestly. And I, I think that's, that's ultimately what drove me uh, to want to be in the room again, um, you know, to use that Hamilton reference to, in the room where it happened. And, um, I, you know, after I lost my mom a few years ago to cancer, like so many other New Yorkers and other citizens have gone through that process, unfortunately, uh, I was very frustrated by our healthcare system, um, healthcare system in this country, healthcare system in New York. Uh, it just didn't work for for my family. It was very complicated, and expensive, and frustrating. And I wanted, to, I thought we could do things better. And so ultimately, I made the difficult decision to to run for office. I put my career on hold. I had to take out some loans. Uh, I was the underdog. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was a, I was a Democrat. I am a Democrat. I was running against an incumbent Republican. Uh, who served for many years in the seat. Uh, so it was kind of a David and Goliath story. Uh, this is 2018. Um, and that was when I, I got that opportunity to, to get some training um, from Impact and, and some other organizations of support. And we came close. We did a lot of work. We worked very hard, knocked on thousands of doors. Um, and I can tell you that I, I, I just didn't give up. <laughs> we didn't go away. Uh, we put a lot of work into that campaign, and ultimately we were successful uh, in November of 2020 when we, we did uh, win the seat. Um, but now I'm in that room, and it's starting to set in, right? It's, you know, after the campaign is over, um, it's time to get to work. And uh, I have a great privilege of sitting in the New York State Senate, which is really the center of action when it comes to public policy making for New York. There are 63 senators in New York, all with statewide jurisdictions. So we're talking about issues um, in my neck of the woods here in upstate New York in the Finger Lakes region, but we're also talking about issues facing New York City and the challenges of this healthcare uh, pandemic. Uh, so it's a real privilege to be in that room. Uh, we have, you'll be pleased to know this, um, uh, Neil, that one of the other impact supported candidates, my dear friend, Senator Kevin Thomas, who represents uh, part of Long Island, Hempstead area, uh, who, is a, who made history. He, he won in 2018 and did a great job. He's been, um, he's been holding the, the water by himself. Uh, so we always joke that now there's uh, two people for their, our aunties and uncles to call <laughs> when they have questions. Um, but he, he, uh, he trailblazed for us, and now there's myself in the Senate and uh, Jennifer Rajkumar, uh, who serves in the New York State Assembly, uh, representing part of Queens. And so we formed a Samosa caucus. <laughs> it's only three of us. Needs one. <laughs> well, it's New York, right? It's New York. Yeah, it's it's overdue. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and and we're here to support each other. I mean, we're obviously all impact supported, but but we're here to support each other um, and grow together and interact with uh, members of our community, whether they're in Long Island or Queens or Rochester or other places, and let them know that you should run for office. You have a voice. People who look like us can serve and can win, and um, that's. 
that's a responsibility and a privilege and a and something I take uh, really close to my heart. That's awesome. Uh, we've got a question um, from Kishan in, in D.C. Um, it says, Senator Cooney, my parents live in upstate and worked for New York State government. They would love to support you. How can we join your mailing list? list? I assume they go to the website, um, but you can answer that. Also, we have friends in Rochester. We can connect. In 1995, you won't believe this, I was actually assigned to intern for your predecessor, Joe uh, Robach, when he was a Democratic Assemblyman. So proud a fellow Desi is replacing him. <laughs> wow, that's that's really powerful. Um, well, first, uh, thank you for your parents' service to the state of New York. Um, and please do visit our website. It's just uh, uh, rocksenator.com, R-O-C, senator.com. And you can click there to go to our campaign page or our government page, it's kind of a landing spot. But my email address is right on there. Um, please do reach out. We'd love to hear from people. We'd love to be of help if we can. Um, and that's just, and that's what yeah. a small world. Uh, I need to connect you both. He's got to run again too in DC. Just see. He, he, oh, he's he ran. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He ran. Mm -hmm. For a low, for yeah. a council. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And, you know, again, I, I am so excited about having the opportunity to work with Impact and other groups to help support other Indian candidates running for office. I can tell you right here in Rochester, um, we have a pretty large Indian community because of our focus. Our economy is really eds and meds, right? So education, higher education, and uh, we have the University of Rochester, which is proudly in the 56 cent district. It's the largest employer in all of upstate New York and the largest healthcare provider in all of upstate New York. My wife uh, actually is a, is a healthcare provider for the University of Rochester. So um, we, have a, we have a pretty large um, South Asian population here, um, but I'm always trying to encourage people not only to register to vote, that is, that is number one. You got, you, got, you got to register, you got to have your voice counted. But, but also think about running, whether it's for a school board seat in your town or village, uh, or whether it's running for, you know, a state office or hopefully beyond, right? There's so many opportunities. So, um, so let, me, let me just add, cut you for a second, because I really want to talk about where you are right now in terms of your transition into, into government, because there's so much happening. I mean, you're in New York, so everybody at least pays some attention to what's happening with Governor Cuomo and 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 given how much the state has been impacted and was really the, the hardest hit early on in terms of COVID, like how are you preparing? Do you know what committees you're gonna sit on or what legislation you're gonna be working on? Like, are you getting, um, you know, what is your orientation? I'm sure, I'm sure there's no kind of manual, although maybe there is, but you know, what, what's uh, like, how are you kind of immediately doing what you can do to help your constituents who I'm sure have plenty of questions on, on vaccines and, and, and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of questions and a lot happening. Um, so I serve on the cities committee cities too, mm -hmm. uh, which focuses on upstate New York uh, communities like Rochester. Um, I serve on committees related to higher education transportation, uh, criminal penal codes, um, focus on arts and culture, uh, focuses on um, kind, of, kind of the bread and butter issues of state government. And um, I, I try to just really be transparent in what I'm doing and try to get as much information possible to then translate back to the community that I serve. Um, half of the role of an elected official is just being accessible. People are having trouble getting through that mammoth New York State government bureaucracy. Um, they need someone to call. And we're happy to take those calls and advocate on behalf of folks. So we're, uh, we're doing our best to, uh, to be responsive. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, do, do you have uh, an agenda item or something that you, uh, that you ran on that you maybe want to see um, introduced as one of your first bills? 
So I, I'm focused on healthcare and making healthcare more affordable. And one of my first priorities is to focus on maternal health and making sure that women get the healthcare needs uh, taken care of pre and postnatal. And uh, this is something I've heard a lot about, especially in communities of color. And that's what I'm focusing on my first bill on. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I assume, I mean, your story, that's very much your inspiration and your, you know, given what you said about your mom, um, what, um, what do you think uh, you've, uh, what, what do you think in the city of Rochester, uh, like w what are the most, I mean, healthcare obviously is across the board is, is one of the highest needs. And as you've said, uh, are there things in terms of the pandemic and the recovery? Um, I've seen a, a lot on your website, you've talked about kind of small business being the engine, even though when we think of Rochester, we think about like Kodak and, and you've said it's not just the Fortune 500. Um, uh, what, what are your thoughts there in terms of how, how to help the community post pandemic? Rochester struggles with poverty. We have one of the highest concentrations of childhood poverty in New York. We have the worst performing public school system in New York, where I, where I graduated from. Um, we've got real challenges and I believe that one of the ways to help post pandemic is to make sure people have jobs which earn a living wage, that they can live in affordable housing with dignity, that they feel safe in their communities. That means improving relationships with our police departments and that they have access to a good paying job that allows them to be uh, to start a family and, and hopefully raise a family here in Rochester. So it's it's a multi <laughs> multi approach to give good quality of life to people. Uh, but I do believe if we pay people a living wage, um, the quality of their life would increase. And that's something I, I remember every day when I come to work. Yeah. Hopefully we see some of that happening at the federal level now with the change in the in the Senate and the president. So um, I think, yeah, there's definitely some alignment there. Are you, uh, I know in the, in your race, we had Andrew Yang come in to endorse you. Um, what, uh, are, are any thoughts on his, his potential run for mayor or your, are you making any endorsement? <laughs> Listen, I love, I love Andrew. I actually, in, in full confession, yesterday was Andrew's birthday and also when he officially announced his mayoral run. So I did text him and I, I told him that I was very proud of him and, um, you know, I'd love to find ways to support him. He is, um, he's very special because he's, he's truly thoughtful. He's innovative. He cares about other people. He has l real life experience, whether it's starting a business. Um, but what I love about Andrew more than anything else is that he's a risk taker. He's not afraid to try new things. I don't agree with every one of his policies, but he doesn't just sit on his hands and shrug his shoulders. He says, let's try this. Let's use data to evaluate if it was successful. And if it wasn't, Let's tweak it and try something different. Um, and I really appreciate that fresh approach to government because we don't need more, you know, folks who just give up or are cynical. We need people who have fresh perspectives, who are hopeful, who want something better for their own families and for your family. And I believe Andrew is one of those voices. I'm very excited that uh, we're going to see a Biden administration that reflects the diversity of this country. Just look at the cabinet picks and nominees so far. Unbelievable. Incredible talent. New faces. Uh, some, some experience being brought to the table. But positive, forward-looking energy. Not one of divisiveness, but unifying our country, 
getting people back on track so that we can be the best versions of ourselves. That's the promise of America. That's the promise of a Biden-Harris presidency. And that starts just next week. And that's gonna trickle down to New York, right? We, we are, New York is one of the biggest contributors to our country's economy. And so a strong America requires a strong New York. And I'm looking forward to partnering with the president-elect uh, to do that type of work. Well, we're very excited to see what you do um, as you get started. And I'm very excited just for impact. I mean, having you as a, as a champion and a partner in New York, I would love to talk about down ballot races, how we can organize the community, get more people elected at the council or, or, you know, municipal level, given that you've, you know, you've worked in, in city politics as well. Um, and you're, you know, clearly just an inspiration to many people, starting with your student governments to your law school student government to the city <laughs> of Rochester. I, uh, you know, I could, I'm sure many people watching can see why you, why, why you get the votes and and why you were able to to, to make history in your community. So, um, you know, I just want to thank you. We can, you know, we can close. We're we're close to half an hour, but. Um, Appreciate your time, and we'd love to keep keep talking and working together, and uh, you know, doing what we can nationwide to to get better representation, and also um, helping uh, candidates talk to each other. I'm I'm sure there are many people like Kishan and and others who uh, will want to learn from your experience and uh, take that into their own communities too. Uh, right on, absolutely, and I encourage all of your. Viewers, if you are interested, please do reach out on social media or on email. And uh, if we can be helpful, we certainly will. This is how we change. This is how we change what American government looks like. If we are talking and supporting each other, and um, I'm committed to doing that work. Okay. Thanks, Senator. Thank you, guys. And as a reminder, that was a fireside chat with New York State Senator Jeremy Cooney. If you join us halfway through, feel free to watch from the beginning. Our host was Neil Makija, Executive Director of Impact. Thank you for joining us.